Welcome to the video, Sig Guy here. I wonder what this video is going to be all about. Hmm. Compensators? It's what you all ask for, so let's get started. <laughs> Okay, before we start the video, I just want to take a quick second to thank everybody that has liked and subscribed to my channel. Uh, if you have not subscribed, there should be a subscribe button right down here if you're on PC. And if you're on a mobile device, it can be found on my YouTube page. A couple different reasons. First, the more subscribers, the more your content gets shared. Uh, right now, two ways under attack more so than ever. So the more exposure that we have, the better. And also when I post new content, you get notifications right away. That way you don't ever miss any videos. So once again, thank you very much, everybody, for liking and subscribing. I really do appreciate it. So you are thinking about getting a compensator for your favorite pistol. I love it. And you're doing some internet homework and research before you make a decision. The more knowledge you have, the better decision you can make. I highly encourage that. So this video isn't going to be specifically about what compensators do and how they work. I will touch on it a little bit. But there are tons of videos already on YouTube, excellent videos showing all that stuff. So I highly encourage you to go watch those as well. This video is going to be more about the proper installation of your compensator onto your threaded barrel. And then if you do have some cycling issues, once you add the comp, things you can do to take care of those cycling issues. So we're going to talk about barrels. We're going to talk about thread pitch. We're going to talk about guide rods. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. So let's get into it and we'll start talking about barrels. All right, so we need a compensator, obviously, and we need a threaded barrel. So it's time to do some shopping. Who does not love shopping for gun stuff? So we're going to talk about a couple different things here. We're going to talk about the comps. We're going to talk about threaded barrel. We're going to talk about thread pitch. And then we're going to talk about also how they lock onto your threaded barrel, okay? So here I got three compensators. We have the Classic P-Series from Armory Craft, threads onto a threaded barrel. The 321, same thing, threads onto a threaded barrel. And their new 365 comp threads onto a threaded barrel. So once you thread them onto a threaded barrel to lock it onto the barrel, there's several different flavors of that as well. All these that use a set screw, which is the most common. So once we screw this on to where it needs to be on the barrel, we're going to tighten up that set screw and that's going to lock it in place and keep it from backing off and stuff. Okay. So there's the set screw and then there are some that there's a slit in the bottom. So that way when you tighten it onto the barrel, it's got a pinch bolt. Okay, so when it gets to be where it needs to be, you tighten up that pinch bolt and it kind of compresses that compensator tightly around the barrel and that's what keeps it from backing off. There are other ones that I've seen where there's like a cone or a wedge that threads in through the muzzle end here. And like I said, it's like a wedge. So the tighter you tighten that in there, the more it wedges itself in between the barrel and the comp and that's what locks it in place. Okay, so that's just a kind of a side note. So when you see that stuff, it all does the same exact thing. So we're going to go to our favorite website and order a comp. We're going to look in the description and we're going to find out the thread pitch for that comp. So the example we're going to use today is the P320. So this comp here, the thread pitch is half by 28 right hand thread. Okay. So we're going to write that down. That way we're not confused when we go to order our barrel because this pistol here, the 226 uses this comp here and the thread pitch in that is 13 and a half by one millimeter left hand thread. So you can already see that these are not cross compatible. I cannot take a 320 comp and put it on 226 or vice versa. Side note, even in some pistols, they offer two different flavors of that barrel. So in some pistols, they have say like 13 by 13 and a half by one millimeter left hand thread and then right hand thread. So you can get two different barrels, same thread pitch, just different thread twist um, on the barrel. So again, don't get confused, make sure you order the right stuff. That way, when you get the stuff in the mail, you're all excited. It all works, and you ain't going to wait on a barrel or a comp because you were the wrong thing. So we know our thread pitch for our compensator. Now we're going to go to our favorite website, whoever that may be, and not even our favorite website, just any website nowadays that has something in stock. Threaded barrels are getting pretty hard to find right now. Comps are pretty popular. Um, so are even suppressors right now, and to find a threaded barrel is actually getting pretty hard. I've had threaded barrels forever. This is the facts on for the... Um, SIG P320 flame fluted it looks badass even when you got uh, cuts in your slide and you can see the barrel through it it looks really nice half by 28 this is what it would look like in a pistol with no comp or um, suppressor on there I've been running comp these threaded barrels I mean for a long time because like even in the 320 it adds like an extra inch of barrel 
which makes me a more accurate shooter. So always been a big fan of the threaded barrels and I really like the look, um, even without a comp on it or a suppressor. So we've ordered our compensator. We've ordered our barrel. They're both the same thread pitch. They're on the way. Um, so now we're gonna start talking about guide rods and tuning kits. Okay, two things I wanna talk about with guide rods. First, we're gonna talk about fitment and then we're gonna talk about tuning, okay? So by fitment, what I'm, I mean specifically is, first of all, all my pistols are always clear, physically and visually checked before I even started making this video. There's never any ammo on my bench and there's never any loaded magazines anywhere on my bench. Um, it's a good tip. So when we cycle our slide, um, as we talked about in the beginning, there are two holes on your compensator, one for your threaded barrel and one for the guide rod to slightly go inside the compensator. So you can see on the P-Series, classic P-Series, there is plenty of room all the way around that guide rod, so fitment is not an issue at all. On the 320, you can see that hole is super big, not even close to any fitment issues on that one. And then on your 365, a um, little bit of a different story, only because of the type of guide rod that the 365 uses. It's a captured guide rod. So you can see this end is pretty big. Um, it has to be because the spring on that end is pretty big. So when we cycle our 365 and our spring compresses, you can see that plunger that comes out the end. Okay. Well, when this is in your pistol, it's just like this. You can see that guide rod does not fit inside that compensator. Only that little plunger does. And it's a very precise fit. So when we do our installation on a 365, two things you got to be focused on. One, the compensator actually dips into uh, the grip module slightly. It's basically sitting like this when you're not fired. And when you fire it, it actually drops into the grip module slightly. And you can see that is a pretty tight fit as well. So we need to make sure that that's properly aligned. And we need to make sure that our guide rod is properly aligned to go into that hole. All before our Loctite on our set screw dries. So we'll talk about that more in the installation portion. I have captured guide rods that I use for tuning and they have a cap on the end here. You take the cap off, you change out your springs, you put the cap back on it. Well, that cap is too big to fit inside this hole, okay? So some of those tuning kits I'm not allowed to use on my 365 if I'm gonna run the compensator. DPM, their plunger uh, on the end here, whatever you wanna call it, is about half the size of the factory one. So there's absolutely no fitment issues with the DPM. Um, very popular kit with the 365 uh, when run, running the comp, no issues at all, okay? So just make sure that our fitment is um, perfect before our Loctite dries on our set screw. So let's talk about tuning kits now. Okay, so the second portion we're gonna talk about with guide rods is tuning kits, okay? But before we talk about the kits specifically, let's talk a little bit about the compensator, how it works, what it does. Um, I'm going to simplify things here because I'm sure you've watched a million videos already and pretty much everybody knows. So before we do anything, I always make sure that we are physically and visually clear inside our chamber, no round in there, never any magazines in my pistols on my bench, um, never any ammo on my bench, never any loaded magazines on my bench. So we are free and clear. So I have a compensator on my 226 here and basically when you fire your pistol, what the compensator does is it helps keep your muzzle down more so you can shoot faster, more accurately, okay? So how that works is when you shoot your pistol and the bullet is propelled down your barrel and it leaves your barrel, that gas usually follows it, okay? It goes the same direction as the barrel, obviously. Um, with your compensator installed, now some of that gas is gonna be directed straight up or out to the sides or however the compensator is designed to work, that's what's gonna happen. So when you shoot your pistol, anytime there's a force going one way, there's an equal and opposite force going the other way. And it's that force that cycles your slide, okay? So now that you have a compensator on your pistol and some of that energy is directed up and out, there's gonna be less energy cycling your slide, okay? And some people may have issues with feeding, extracting, double feed, stove pipes, um, you name it, it happens. Um, not everybody, and it's very um, dependent on what type of ammo you use, okay? So, because we have less energy cycling our slide, there's things that we can do to, once again, make it run 100% reliable, okay? So to start with, with my 226, I never had any issues. Never once, any problems, and I shoot reloads. My reloads are a lower power factor, and they're basically, um, I designed them to work with my X5 to have the least amount of recoil so I can shoot 
the fastest possible because compensators um, weren't available for the X5 until now. So on my 320, um, anytime you modify a pistol, you're changing the timing and the mass and all kinds of stuff. So there's things you can do to correct that. And one of them is use a tuning kit. So in my 320, I did have cycling issues. Again, because I use low power factor ammo, um, the spring that I had in there was too heavy or too tight or whatever you want to call it. There's a, too much resistance for that lesser force, which cycles your slide, to completely compress that spring to pick up another round um, from the magazine and properly chamber that round. Okay. So if you have the cycling issues, you can do a couple different things. You can get a tuning kit or you can experiment with ammo. So the first option, the easiest option, cheapest option nowadays, is a tuning kit. So this is the tuning kit by Armory Craft for the X5 Legion. They make one for the regular 320, one for the um, compact classic P-Series, and one for the full-size classic P-Series. Um, and in the kit, you get several different springs, and you get a solid guide rod. Some of your guide rods aren't even metal. They're plastic or some kind of composite, and um, some metal ones are actually hollow. These are solid guide rods in all their kits. They all come with them. Um, and then you got some spring options. So in this kit here, we got a 15 pound, a 14 pound, and a 12 pound. And I'll tell you right now, in most of my 320s, I'm running the 12 pound, it's the red spring, okay? So we have the tuning kit, um, that if we have um, cycling issues, we can use that as a tool. And then what I would also recommend is bringing um, several different ammo types to the range when you uh, go to shoot your compensator for the first time. Most range ammo is lower power um, it does not have enough energy to cycle your slide in some instances um, all the way to make it cycle properly. So you'd want to bring some range ammo, um, some self-defense ammo. I mean, you've heard of plus P, plus P plus, whatever your pistol's rated for. Um, there's those options as well as bullet weights. You get your 115, your 124, your 147. If you get on the internet and start watching compensator videos and what type of ammo to use, everybody's got a different opinion. So it's really something... You just need to experiment with yourself, okay? Some people feel a heavier bullet cycles a slide better. Some people feel a lighter bullet cycles a slide better. Lighter bullet because there's more um, space inside your case, which you can get more powder in there. Obviously, the powder is what controls everything. The more powder, the more explosive, the more energy um, to cycle that slide. So, again, there's many different theories. It's just something that get your tuning kit when you purchase your compensator and your barrel. Um, that way it all arrives at the same time, and it's just another tool in your toolbox that you can use if you have cycling issues. Um, people that shoot with, you know, self-defense ammo and all that stuff, um, you probably won't even have, you probably won't even notice a difference as far as um, reliability with your pistol. But again, just in case, it's better to be prepared. So now that we've talked about that, we have our kit, we have our comp, we have our barrel, we're ready to install it. Let's talk about the installation process. So now let's talk about how to properly install your compensator onto your threaded barrel. In the packaging that I got with my compensator here, there was an insert from Armory Craft with uh, instructions on it. So we're going to read through those real quick and I'll put it up on the side over here as I'm reading it. The first part just says that there's a spare screw included, which is here. And the other screw, basically you'll find it installed in the compensator already. And what they were doing is checking uh, the fitment of the screw. So they want you to remove that one and uh, do this process. So it says important, please clean and degrease the hole as well as the screw before applying blue Loctite. Please shake the Loctite bottle or tube so you get a pasty consistency. Sometimes with storage, blue Loctite separates, leaving a thin liquid at the top. Apply the Loctite only on the screw, not the barrel. Please exercise caution when reinstalling the screw to avoid stripping the threads or the head of the screw. Warranty does not cover damage or cross-threading due to improper installation. This includes the stripping of screws or threads on the compensator, barrel, or screw. After the blue Loctite is applied, please do not use the firearm for 24 hours. So, pretty straightforward. In our installation, we're going to need Q-tip. They're always helpful. A clean paper towel or rag, not the rag you use to clean your firearm as there's oils and stuff already all over that. We're going to need some alcohol and some blue Loctite, blue 242 is what I use. I don't know why they put it in a red bottle, um, but it is blue Loctite. So that's what we're going to use. So per the instructions, we're going to go step by step. Let me open those back up. 
So we're going to clean and degrease the hole as well as the screw before applying Loctite. So we're going to use our Allen wrench that's included as well. We're going to remove that screw from the screw in the compensator, from the hole in the compensator, which is right here. Okay. So we're going to clean up this screw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of alcohol and I'm going to add it to my paper towel. And I'm going to take my screw, put it right in the alcohol, squeeze it, and just kind of keep doing this. Uh, what we're doing is we're getting the oils and the stuff off of the screw from the machining process, whether it's nitride or just oil. Um, we need to get that all off of there so the Loctite can um, adhere to the threads on our screw better. So that's all nice and clean. We're going to do the same thing to our screw hole in the compensator. So I'm going to add some alcohol to my Q-tip. I'm actually going to take some of the fuzz off of my Q-tip so it doesn't get stuck in my hole there. And then we're going to insert the Q-tip into the hole, into the threaded hole, and we're just going to work it back and forth. Okay. And we're going to pull that out. Pretty clean. Um, but we're going to, that's going to get all this stuff off of the threads. That way the Loctite bonds with the compensator better as well. So we're going to use the other end of the Q-tip. We're going to put some alcohol on that. And we're going to do the same thing to the threaded holes in the compensator that the barrel goes through. Okay. Again, nitride, the process, sometimes it leaves some residue. The manufacturer does try to clean most of that out of there. Um, we're just going to ensure that it is all clear out of there. So if you got compressed air or anything like that, you can actually blow through that and get all that stuff out of there as well. And then we're going to do the same thing to our threaded barrel. Okay, just going to make sure if it's a used threaded barrel, we get all that gun um, residue off of there, oils, whatever the case may be. Okay, and we're not applying Loctite to our threads on our barrel. We're just making sure that it's nice and clean so that way it threads on nice and easy. Okay, so we have everything all cleaned up. Next, what we'll do is we'll install our threaded barrel into our 365. Again, we are always clear and free, no magazine, no round in the chamber. We'll rotate our takedown lever, remove our slide, take out our guide rod, take out our factory barrel, put in our threaded barrel. Basically, you're gonna lube this up too the way you normally would. Put your guide rod back in there. And then reinstall onto our clip module. And there you go. So what I like to do is I like to put Loctite on my screw and then put it into my compensator and then put it onto my barrel. Um, this prevents me from accidentally cross-threading because I'm not lined up properly because it's hard to see in there um, with the compensator on your threaded barrel. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some blue Loctite, but first we're going to shake the living hell out of this stuff. It's been sitting around a little while. We just want to make sure that the water on top is mixed with the pasty stuff in the bottom. And then when we put this on our threads, if it looks like water and it drips right off, chances are it's either um, not mixed thoroughly or it's just an old bottle and you might want to get a new bottle of Loctite. So like I said, it is blue. So we're going to put a little bit of this onto our threads. And as you can see, it almost like stands up. So I know it's nice and pasty. I'm going to coat my screw completely. And then like I said, I can see the screw hole very easily right here in my hands. So I'm going to start my screw into the hole just like that until I can start seeing it come through the other side here. I'm gonna make sure I don't go too far. I'm gonna back it out just a little bit. And I'm actually gonna leave my Allen wrench right in there. So now we'll thread this on to our barrel until it contacts our barrel and slide, just like that. <clears throat> now I am not going to try to force this so it's flat with my slide by tightening it. Once it contacts my barrel, I'm gonna back it off just a little bit and then we're gonna lock it down there, okay? And I'm not gonna tighten it up as tight as I can get it right now. I wanna be able to move that just a little bit 
because I want to make sure fitment is where it needs to be. And what I mean by that is you can see how tight of a fit it is between our grip module and the bottom of our compensator here. Okay, so we're going to have to take out our Allen wrench for this. And at that first pull back, you can tell it was caught a little bit and then it self-centered. And now it works properly. Okay, so you can see that it goes into our frame, our grip module, a little bit just like we talked about in the beginning. And you can also see how our guide rod goes into the compensator. And you can see it's a really tight fit. It's very precise. Okay. So once I know that that is centered, I can move it around a little bit. And I can actually feel where I want it to be centered there. I'm going to release my slide slowly. I'm not touching that at all, as much as possible anyway. I'm going to put my Allen wrench back in here. Find my Allen screw, and I'm going to tighten it up as much as I can with my Allen wrench, and then we're going to wipe off any excess Loctite, and it's a good idea to probably stick your Q-tip in there and clean off the screw. That way, if there's some in the hex portion of that Allen screw, it's not filled with Loctite, and you'll be able to get your Allen wrench um, in there to remove it. So there you have it. Now we're going to let that sit for 24 hours before we go and shoot this. Um, so let's wrap up this video. Okay, just some information I want to include before I wrap up this video. First, I want to say these look pretty awesome. They did a really nice job on these. And people asked me to do a review and stuff um, out shooting. This is something that's really hard to show how good it works. Um, and it's got high-speed cameras and all that stuff, and even that's really subjective. But what I will tell you is this pistol without the compensator, even with the sport takedown lever using that, shooting with the red dot, um, you can see how much the red dot bounces around when you're shooting fast, okay? So a lot of times the dot will disappear from the window, and you got to get it back in the window, obviously, to make a shot. <clears throat> Since having the compensator on it, using the red dot, that dot, it still bounces around, obviously, because the gun's moving, but it rarely even leaves the center of the window on my RDS, okay? So I can sit there and do double taps, pow, pow, like really fast, and I'm talking their space like this far apart. Huge improvement, and it's really something you got to try yourself to see how much more, um, how much better it works on your pistol. To put a number on it, it's, it's pretty um, impossible if you ask me. Ah, so some things I want to go over <clears throat> also that if your compensator still continues to move around on you, there's a couple things you can do, okay? And this is not the barrel, obviously, I would use them there. It's no threaded barrel. But when you remove your compensator, take a look at your barrel, take your barrel right out of your pistol, you'll see the divot or the dot or whatever uh, set screw made on your barrel. So what you can do is right now that set screw is trying to contact your barrel that's curved okay so your barrel's curved like that and your set screws at one point and is a very small footprint that that um, set screw can work with to try to lock it in place so when you see the little mark on your barrel you can take like something like a dremel tool and make a flat spot just a small flat spot on your barrel okay so now there's more sur surface area for that set screw to bite into and that'll help keep it locked in place uh, you can do that, or you can make even a little dimple or a divot in your barrel. Um, and I'm not talking about a hole through the barrel. I'm just talking about a little dimple or a divot that that set screw can sit into, and that'll help keep it in place as well. If that's not something you're comfortable doing, then personally, I know it says in the instructions not to use your Loctite on your threads, but personally, I have no problems putting Loctite on my threads sparingly. I'm not talking about the whole, you know covering all the threads and putting them in there. You can probably never get the compensator off. Um, but this is blue Loctite. It doesn't harden, harden. It's kind of like a gooey, pasty, gluey substance um, when it is dry. So I would put a little bit on the threads, screw it on there, see how it works um, with my set screw. And if it still doesn't hold it in place, I mean, I would take that back off, put a little bit more on there, put it back together. Um, you can take the compensator off and screw it back on. And if you have a dual adjustable trigger with Loctite on it, you'll know what I'm talking about. That screw comes out a little bit harder, but it goes in just as hard and it's still working. Um, you don't have to clean it all off is what I'm saying and start all over by adding a little bit more Loctite. So that's just a couple options you have. 
Um, personally, me, I would rather have my compensator stay put while I'm out shooting versus if you're the type of person that likes to clean your pistol every time you come home from the range. I mean, I do. Um, you can still clean your pistol without removing your compensator from the barrel is what I'm getting at here. You remove your guide rod and your spring. You pull your barrel forward. You clean your slide. You clean that section of the barrel out here. You run your bore snake through it or patches or whatever you got. Lube it up, put it all back together, and you're good to go. I'd rather be more reliable out at the range or shooting with my compensator not moving versus making it a little bit easier to clean my pistol when I got home. Okay. Uh, so that's the first point. Next, I just want to say that if you do have cycling issues, which some people will, a lot of people won't, but in the case that you do, um, that's not something you need to jump on the phone and call the manufacturer and say, hey, this compensator, my gun won't cycle, or whatever. It's nothing they can take care of for you, okay? Their job is to make the compensator, make sure it's a good quality product, it threads on there perfectly, it doesn't go flying off your pistol when you shoot the pit or, you know, you shoot it. Uh, the screw holes are nice and clean and it works as intended, you know, it directs the gas where it needs to be going. Um, other than that, that, that's their responsibility. They took care of it. The rest of it's your responsibility, as we already mentioned with the tuning kits and the different ammo. If you're having cycling issues, that's just something you need to do trial and error and do your homework and you'll actually figure it out and it'll be 100% reliable again. Um, next, we want to say that um, generally compensators are not usually an EDC item, but that's not to say that they can't be, okay? People add all kinds of stuff. You got lights, you got red dots. I mean, why is a compensator any different? It's not. Uh, it is my opinion that when you add something to your pistol, like what we just mentioned, reliability decreases until you compensate for it. Um, what I mean by that is tune it or whatever the case may be to get it back to 100% reliable um, firearm. So if you're going to use it for concealed carry, um, home defense, everyday carry, whatever you want to call it, and you add your compensator, just make sure you go out and shoot a couple hundred rounds. The more the better. To make sure that you know that that's going to work the minute you draw it and you have to defend your life or whatever the case may be, it's going to work properly, okay? Um, some people say that with an EDC, it's adding length, it's not practical, whatever the case may be. Look at your lights and stuff that go on these things. A lot of times these lights are way past the muzzle end of the, of the firearm. And a lot of these compensators, especially the 365, are really short. So because it adds length, who cares? Um, and lastly, what I want to mention is the compensator, it's not going to make you a better shooter, okay? If you sucked before you bought this thing, you're going to still suck afterwards. What a compensator does is it just makes you shoot faster, more accurately, okay? So if you're the type that you're at the range and you're taking, you know, three, four, five seconds in between shots to make sure you get it perfectly centered in the bullseye, this isn't going to do anything for you. But if you're doing double taps, you're a competitive shooter, um, you're practicing real life situations where you're not doing mag dumps, but you're, you're cycling. Your cadence is a lot faster shooting uh, because your life's on the line. And you're trying to save your life or those around you. Um, this is going to be an improvement for you because it's going to reduce the amount of recoil. Okay. So there you have it. There's my compensator video. I hope that if you had questions, they got answered. Um, if you still have questions that you need to answer, please feel free to send me a private message on Facebook. I got a contact form on my website, sigguy.com. Please feel free to use that. People use that all the time. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, my YouTube channel, if you're on PC, like I said, the button's right down here. If you're on a mobile device, uh, just go to my YouTube channel and hit subscribe. The more that our content gets out there, the, the more it's better for the 2A um, community. So as always, I appreciate you watching the videos. Thank you very much and have a good day.